Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is Physics Chapter 13, Modern Physics Video 1. Today's topic is weight particle duality of energy and matter. The objectives are no definition of photon and a Planck's constant. Understand the manner in which photoelectric effect demonstrates the particle nature of light. Be able to determine the energy of a photon based on its frequency or wavelength. Be able to determine a photon's type using the EM spectrum chart. Be able to use and, or interpret a graph of photon, photon's energy versus uh, frequency or energy versus wavelength. Light as a wave. Light is electromagnetic wave produced by oscillating electric charge. The vibrating charge produces alternating electric and magnetic fields which are perpendicular to the direction of the wave's motion. These waves can travel through vacuum in long space. Light is a wave because light has wave characteristics such as amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. Light is a wave also because light exhibit, uh, exhibit wave, wave behavior such as diffraction, interference, and Doppler effect. However, the wave model of light cannot explain interactions of light with matter. So here is the photoelectric effect. Everybody knows Albert, Albert Einstein, Einstein for his theory of relativity and the Nobel Prize he won for it. He also... So what? I didn't win the Nobel Prize for relativity. I won it for explaining the photoelectric effect. Right, right, of, of course, sorry. Einstein won the Nobel Prize for his work on the photoelectric effect, which helped settle the age-old debate of what light is made of. So, what is it? Okay, let's rewind a little. Newton had thought light was made of particles, and his rival Hooke had thought it was a wave. And when technology advanced enough, some experiments proved Hooke was right. That proof, and Maxwell's equations describing light's behavior as a wave, made the debate die down, until the photoelectric effect was discovered. When light hits a cable next to another cable, electrons jump from one to the other. It was thought it happened because waves of light made atoms vibrate until they ejected an electron. But when it was measured carefully, a big contradiction was found. It only happened for light of some wavelengths, for others, no electrons jumped at all. Einstein was bewildered. The photoelectric effect should work regardless of the type of light. If light wasn't made of particles, and now it turned out that it couldn't be made of waves, what was it made of? After much reflection, he formulated a new hypothesis combining the two previous ones. What if light were made not of waves or particles, but of both? That is, what if light were made of wave packets? That concept, which we now call photons, allowed Einstein to write out equations that explain the photoelectric effect in 1905. This consolidated the idea that light can sometimes be described as a wave, sometimes as a particle, and sometimes as either. It was a revolutionary view, and it opened the field for quantum physics. Robert A. Millikan, an American experimental physicist, was unconvinced by Einstein's conclusions. He set out to prove him wrong by carefully measuring the photoelectric effect. However, years later, Millikan ended up proving Einstein right, and they were both awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Okay, so photoelectric effect basically is the emission of electrons when light is strong onto a negative end of a pair of charged plates. Electrons emitted in this matter are called photoelectrons. So the observed phenomenon was extraordinary in that the current flow not only varied with the intensity of light, it also varied strongly with the frequency of light, such that there was a sharp cutoff and no current flow for smaller frequencies. Only when the frequency is above a certain point, called the threshold frequency, the current flow increases with light intensity. So this indicates the energy of light varies with frequency directly, which is not part of classical wave property. 
So here is the energy of the electrons. There is no, no electrons at all until this is called a threshold frequency of light. Then the energy increases as the frequency increases. Quantum theory. So quantum theory assumed that electromagnetic energy is emitted from and absorbed by matter in discrete amount of packets. So each packet is called a quantum of energy. Max Planck derived the constant 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules, joules times second to describe the scale of energy increments allowed in atoms. So Albert Einstein used the concepts, the concept of quantum to explain the photoelectric effect. So he invents the idea of the photon, that's the packet we saw, like a packet of wave energy that has this energy related to Planck's constant and its frequency. So the quantum or basic unit of electromagnetic energy is called a photon. A photon is a massless particle of light. It carries the quantum of energy E photon equals H times F. So for each frequency, you have a, a packet, corresponding packet, and that packet has the energy of H times F. And this H is called the Planck's constant. Planck, Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times second. So this uh, theory basically is saying wave has a particle nature. The result of photoelectric effect indicate particle nature of light because using photon as model for light rather than the wave model accounts for the results of the exper experiment. So that what uh, you probably say, wait a second, I thought amplitude is energy. Yes, amplitude of light is energy. Amplitude of light or intensity of light indicates a number of photons. So the brighter the light is, the more photons you have. The more intense the light, the more photons. Now the energy of each photon is directly related to the light frequency. So the higher frequency you have, the more energy you have. For example, gamma rays that has tremendous amount of energy. That's why we try to stay away from it. Even when, when we have x-rays, you have to protect yourself because x-ray has a very high frequency, so it has lots of energy. Energy of each photon is H times F, or F equals C over lambda, so E of photon equals HC over lambda also. The amount of energy of each photon is directly proportional to the frequency and inversely proportional to the wavelength. So here is direct relationship. This slope is the um, Planck's constant. That is H, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. E and lambda has an inverse relationship. The longer the wavelength, the lower uh, energy the photon have. Okay. By the way, E is the energy in photon. Remember, there are two units for energy can be in joules or in EV. So in this equation, in this equation, E photon is in joules. Uh, Compton effect is a photon particle collision. 1922, Arthur Compton was able to bounce an X-ray photon off an electron. So again, light is interacting with matter. The result was an electron with more kinetic energy than it started with. Well, photon can actually interact with a particle, so photon has momentum. Another proof that a photon is a particle. So now we have two proofs that light is a particle. One is photoelectric effect, and the other one is Compton effect. So here is an animation of a wave interacting with particle. Originally, this particle is at rest. Zero energy, zero momentum. After the collision, this particle gained energy and gained momentum. Now what happens to the light? So the light energy has to be less because its wavelength is longer and light momentum has to be less also. So during a collision, both energy and the momentum are conserved. So the momentum of the photon, P equals H over lambda. So a photon, although it doesn't have any mass, it has a momentum as well as energy. All photon travels at the same speed, C. 
Similar to the energy of photon, the momentum is also directly proportional to the frequency and inversely proportional to the wavelength. So here is the equation. P equals H over lambda or H times F over C. In this equation, P is momentum, H is Planck's constant, and lambda is the wavelength. So momentum and energy are conserved in photon-electric uh, collision. This is before collision, all the energy equals after collision. This is before momentum equals after momentum. So remember, energy of the photon is HC over lambda. Momentum of photon is H over lambda. Before collision, photon has energy E1 and momentum P1. Uh, before collision, electron has zero energy and zero momentum. After collision, electron gains energy and gains momentum. Therefore, therefore, photons' energy has to be less and photons' momentum has to be less. Less energy and less momentum means the wavelength has to be longer and frequency is lower than before. Let's take a look at this example. Relate photons' energy and momentum. The momentum of photon, P, is given by this equation, P equals h over lambda, where h is Planck's constant, lambda is photon's wavelength. Write an expression for photon's energy in terms of its momentum. Energy is h times f. f equals c over lambda. So I rearrange this equation. Uh, this becomes h over lambda times c. h over lambda is p, so e equals p times c. Light has both wave and particle nature. So wave nature... Uh, Light is a wave because it has characteristics of wave. Light is a wave because it has wave behavior. Light is a particle. There are two things to prove light is a particle. One is photoelectric effect. The other one is Compton effect. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.